channel and check it out guys. I got a couple cool new parts. These are actually, this is a prototype from TTE, a throttle body inlet, and they tossed over a, how do you pronounce this? Teal? Teal? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Kyle, the man of many words. What we're gonna be doing today is I'm gonna do a baseline run, get you guys the wastegate duty cycle of how my car is running, how high it is. We're gonna toss these bad boys on, Kyle's actually gonna create some custom piping as well to go on this, and we're gonna see if it makes a difference. I personally am under the impression I'm not gonna gain any more horsepower. We've seen some throttle body inlets be installed and some dyno runs be performed. Eh, not sure I really buy it, but for the sake of efficiency, I feel like there's something to be gained. So we're gonna do this today in a nice video, before and after effects. I hope we can get it done soon enough that I can get back out there in daylight and do an after run as well. And I'll get to that baseline run right now for you guys. So before we can even see if any part or any modification works, we need to do a baseline run to see how the car is operating right now. The main thing I'm focused on is wastegate duty cycle. Previous to all of these modifications, my log showed 99.99% on my wastegate duty cycle. You could not close it any further. This turbo was maxed out. Now I can't 100% say for certain, but when we did the previous modification of that tube that comes out from the intercooler on the hot side, and he made it a bit better flowing, right, of performance, and smoother and a bit bigger, uh, we saw the wastegate duty cycle go down to 97.5%. I can't verify that 100%, like I just said, but we think that's what ended up creating the less percentage of the wastegate duty cycle. So I'm gonna do a quick log here. If you're unfamiliar with how to do a log, I've already made a video on how to do this all. Check out in the description below. I will have put a link to that video so you see how I'm doing this, but we'll get this run done and we'll see what we're at for wastegate, wastegate duty cycle as the car sits right now. Here's the data log from my baseline run. Up top, we have the motor speed. Down below, we have my wastegate duty cycle. What we see here is a closed wastegate. That's 99.99% wastegate duty cycle up to 3,500 RPM. Past that, as we get higher in the RPMs, we see the wastegate open a little and then close a little, then open a little, and then close, close, and close some more until we hit 97.22% wastegate duty cycle. This is what I'm referencing throughout the video on our peak wastegate duty cycle. The goal of these performance parts is to see how low we can get this wastegate duty cycle percentage. So here are the two parts we're gonna be playing with today and installing. This is from the Turbo Engineers. This is actually a prototype that they've given me to check out and see what it can do. Pretty neat, nice looking piece of hardware. And then we have this blow off valve, diverter valve, whatever you wanna call it, that Kyle has beautifully powder coated black as well because I am a son of a gun and a spoiled brat. It came to me in this really nice kind of chrome finish, but I'm all about that black on black on black. So those are the two parts we're going to be installing to see if they make a difference today. this little guy on here not so little anymore bigger guy on here and we quickly came to the realization that it isn't just straightforward as we thought you can see the four holes there to connect to the actual manifold we have this over here there's two oh wait what the it, there's only two holes the other two are on the other side so Kyle has had to come and drill out my spacer to allow for this new prototype to fit on. So we're hoping this fits now and we see no more issues with this now that we've realized that it connects slightly differently. So now 
Kyle has installed a tube here that connects to the back there, oh so nicely. And he also managed to jimmy rig a resistor onto this, so now we're not going to get fault codes from that as well. Now on to actually connecting the piping and him fabbing a brand new piece of pipe. So now that we have the top side all put in together, we are looking at replacing and modifying this piping. He's going to be taking it off just like we did on the other side. So it runs here from the intercooler, goes up and up all the way up there, just like we did over here. And I didn't make a video on this for you guys. This was a long day of custom fab. I shared it on Instagram, I shared it on Facebook. If you're interested in going back and looking at the, those pictures, you'll be able to see exactly what Kyle managed to put together for this. We've removed the piping that it comes OEM, and as you can see, there's some serious pancake spots on that. It's not the prettiest of pieces. So Kyle's gonna see what he can whip together and improve on the airflow. So here's the raw material that we're gonna be using to make this custom piece. Some three inch silicone, some three inch to two and three quarter silicone and some three inch aluminum piping that Kyle is going to fab into one hell of a nice looking piece. once it's been powder coated black. Here we have it, one hell of a beautiful looking pipe, aluminum that he welded together and has now powder coated a crinkle black. The reason why we went with crinkle black is, look at that, matchy matchy with the other side that we've already done. So now, we're gonna take this bad boy, I lost a bit of light there, and go right up there with this. It's gonna fit right in there ever so perfectly for our new three inch pipe. Here they are side by side, the OEM piece compared to the aftermarket fabbed by Kyle. Look at the difference on this piping. It is you versus the one your girlfriend tells you not to worry about. Look at the size of this three inch. It is drastically different, much bigger. The flow we expect to be that much greater. Super excited to get this on the car, test it out and see if we've made a difference. All installed, clamped up connected from the top down. Don't know how much you can see of it down there, but came out exactly like we hoped. It was a tight fit, but we made it work with that three inch all the way down straight off of this TTE prototype throttle body inlet. Here it is now with the Unitronic four inch air intake system and we ran into a bit of a problem. You can see right there it is touching and we had to actually remove the grommets, these guys. We had to pop them out because if these were actually in there and held it in the right spot, you can see that it's a little too far over. So we're gonna have to make some modifications down the road. I think we're probably gonna leave it for what it is right now. And then we'll get the front piece on here. We'll see how much play we have on the intake, but we'll check it out, see what the fitment's like, and we might make some modifications in the future. So like I just explained to you guys, we were hitting right here, and that was just not working for us. So my brilliant idea was to remove the actual box over the Unitronic intake, thinking just for now is a temporary fit, but I forgot there's no support in this because the support comes on the bottom of the actual box. So, what we're doing, I do not advise to anyone, but I trust in writer performance, we're actually going to cut a hole. Yes guys, this beautiful Unitronic intake, I'm sorry guys at Unitronic, we're gonna cut a hole in this so it fits right over top of that and we don't have to worry about it rubbing anymore. 
So every now and then we do stuff at the shop that Kyle just gets such a kick out of because he knows it personally hurts me <laughs> deep down inside. He's about to cut a hole in this beautiful Unitronic in <laughs> Peekaboo, we see your ass. There it is, the gaping hole <laughs> that we cut into the intake box to make sure that it was not rubbing. Not the end of the world. Twisted this slightly more vertical so it didn't touch the box and now we have clearance. So there'll be no rubbing. Yes, that is going to affect airflow, but hopefully it won't be the end of the world. Installs all wrapped up here of the throttle body inlet, the TTE prototype, and the new diverter valve, blow off valve, whatever the hell you want to call it. Got all the new piping here, still connects to the Unitronic intake, and we got that nice little gap over there to make sure that it fits, but it's all wrapped up, looking good, and now we are going to get out there and do another data log and see if it's improved the efficiency at all. So we're back out here to get a result of the aftermath of our install. Uh, sadly, it wasn't able to take place in the same day, so there might be a little bit of a variable in conditions, but the temperature's almost the same out here. I'm gonna do a quick log of the car, a third gear pull, just like I did before the install to see if our products that we just installed, the TTE throttle body inlet, as well as that TL tile, you guys can correct me how the hell I'm pronouncing that, blow off valve or diverter that we installed, plus the additional three inch piping to see if it changed our wastegate duty cycle. Here we go. Here's the data log with all of those fancy performance parts installed. We see a closed wastegate up until about 3600 RPM. That's pretty close to what we saw on the baseline of 35 and chain, so probably about 100 RPM different. The wastegate opens significantly and then closes and closes, and what do we see? Boom! 95% wastegate duty cycle. We have improved the efficiency of the system almost by 2.5% when it comes to the wastegate duty cycle. It opens and it closes again back to that 95%. So we know for a fact we have now made my car more efficient. I'd say that's one hell of a thorough video on my prototype throttle body inlet from TTE plus my diverter slash blow off valve from TL tile. Let me know how to say it please in the comments below. And finally that three inch piping from the intercooler into the inlet custom made by Rider Performance. I love putting this custom parts on this car. It's just cool to have a little bit something different rather than something bought off a store shelf or from one of the other companies. It's just neat to do our own little thing here and there. And as you guys can tell by my logs, it appears like it worked. Slightly more efficient on the turbo with a slightly lower peak wastegate duty cycle. The car feels strong as hell, especially in this cold weather that we have right now. Sadly, unlike some of the places in the States, our drag racing season ended, I don't know, a couple months ago now. So I can't get back out there. We're waiting until next spring, but stay tuned. I still have a couple more videos on my RS3 before I tuck it away for the winter. Thank you all so very much for watching. Until next time, guys, take care.